Okay, so here we are at J19, which is all about the principle of zero products. This is what we're going to use to solve an equation after we factored it. Okay, so we want to make sure that our equation is equal to zero. Okay, I'm just going to put here, make sure it's equal to zero. Okay, this does not work unless you have it equal to zero. So the reason we want it equal to zero is because if we have two things being multiplied that equals zero, then we know one of them has to be zero. So as long as I have two things being multiplied, notice like factors, right? Factors are multiplied and it's equal to zero, then we can solve this by just setting those factors equal to zero and solving each of the equations that that creates. Okay, so this is the nice case. This one's already factored for us and it's already equal to zero. So all we have to do is solve each little equation. So on the first one, I'm gonna move the seven over, which gives me two X is equal to seven. And then I divide off my two. Be sure you just leave your answers as reduced fractions, okay? Reduced fractions, because my math lab does not like decimals on this one, okay? And then to solve the second equation, I'm moving the four over, which gives me X equals negative four, okay? Now, um, on an exam or on a worksheet, I would be totally fine with you just kind of boxing in your answers like this. In my math lab, I believe it gives you like X equals and then it puts a box there and you put your answers in. So you would put in like negative four and then a comma and then seven halves. So make sure you put the comma in there to separate your answers and don't use spaces. Okay. All right. And then let's look at another one. <laughs> this one is not factored for us, right? But it is equal to zero. So that's good, <laughs> right? Small victories. So we need to go ahead and factor this. And the first thing I do always, always, always when I'm factoring is look for a greatest common factor. And in this case, we have a greatest common factor, right? They're both divisible by five and they both have an X in common. So my greatest common factor is a five X so I'm going to take 5x and take that out of each term by dividing it off. So 5x squared divided by 5x leaves me with a single x. Negative 75x divided by 5x leaves me with just a negative 15. Now I can't go any further here because this is just a monomial. There's nothing I can do with it. And inside here, even though I have two terms, it's not going to be a difference of squares or a difference of cubes because I have just a one exponent on this X, right? So I can't break it down any further. So now that it's fully factored and equal to zero, I'm just going to set each factor equal to zero okay. and then solve. On the first one, I divide off the five to undo that multiplication which gives me X equals zero. And on the second one, I'm gonna add 15 to both sides, which gives me X equals 15. Okay, not too bad maybe. <laughs> okay, so on this section, there could be any type of the factoring we've gone over. It could be a difference of squares, it could be a sum of cubes, it could be um, something that we have to use some product for. It could be grouping, okay? So we move everything so that it's equal to zero and then we do our factoring method. So on this one, notice everything's already on one side so it's equal to zero and we have three terms. So our factoring method is going to be the sum product chart that we learned um, in the last video, I believe. Okay, or maybe video before last. Um, first thing we look for always, always, always greatest common factor. And in this case, there is no greatest common factor, right? These don't have anything in common. So I'm gonna go ahead and go straight to my chart. My sum is, remember, my middle coefficient, which is a five, and my product is my first coefficient times my last coefficient. So two times negative three gives me a negative six. So that means I need two numbers that, that multiply to negative six that combine to five. And I can't use two and three, right? Because if I need it to be a negative, one of these is going to have to be negative and that would cause it not to combine to five. So I'm going to have to use six and negative one, okay? Six times negative one gives me negative six and six minus one gives me the five that I need. 
So I'm going to take these two to replace my middle term. Now, if my leading coefficient had been a 1, I could use that handy dandy shortcut. <laughs> but it's not a 1. So I have to take the two numbers from my chart and replace my middle term. So my first term is till, uh, still 2x squared. When I plug my 6 and my negative 1 in, I need to label them with x. So plus 6x minus 1x minus the 3 that was there. So all I did is replace that middle term with the numbers from my chart, and now I can group. Okay. So out of the first grouping, they have a 2x in common, and I will be left with an x plus 3. Okay. Out of the second pairing, I notice I really want to get a leftover that is two positives. So since I have two negatives, I know I'm going to have to take out a negative. So I'm just going to factor out a negative 1, which will leave me with a positive x plus 3. Okay. And then just like we did before, we now see that we have a common factor right, within our leftovers. So now that they both have this, I can take that out as a common factor. So x plus 3 is my common factor. What's left over once I take that common factor out is a 2x from the first term and a negative 1 from the second term. Okay. Now I'm not done. I know that was a little bit of work to get it factored, but now that it's factored, remember this is all about solving. So I'm going to go ahead and set each factor equal to 0 so I can actually solve for x. So the first one, I just subtract the 3, which gives me x equals negative 3. And then on the second one, I'm going to move my 1 to the other side. And then I'll divide off that 2, which gives me x equals 1 half. Okay, maybe not too bad. Let me do one more, and then I'll have you all try some. Okay, so this one, um, we do have a little bit of a problem in that it's not equal to 0. So before we start with our factoring or anything like that, make sure it's equal to 0. So I'm going to start by subtracting that 12. So we have 12x squared minus 7x minus 12 equals 0, because I need to move everything to that one side, right? All right, then I look for a greatest common factor. Okay. I have no greatest common factor on this one. So now I can go ahead and look at my sum product chart, right? My sum is my middle coefficient, which in this case is a negative 7, right? And my product is my first coefficient times my last coefficient. So 12 times negative 12 is actually negative 144, <laughs> right? Now, I will tell you, um, if you're not sure what you can multiply to get 144 that combines to 7, right, um, you can take your calculator and just do 144 divided by 1, 144 divided by 2, you know, and keep going. And you'll only have to go as high as 144's square root. So if I were to take the square root of 144, it's 12, right? Obviously, 12 times 12. Um, so what that is telling me is that I would do 144 divided by 1, 144 divided by 2, 144 divided by 3, up until I do 144 divided by 12. By the time I get to 12, I should have every possible pairing of um, 144 factors, okay? Or not 100, 144's <laughs> factors. So for the sake of time, I'm not going to list every possible thing that you can multiply to get 144. I'm going to go ahead and let you know that it is 16 times 9 that we want to use that will multiply to give us 144 that can combine to give us a negative 7. But in order to get that negative 7, our 16 would have to be negative. So negative 16 plus 9, these are the two numbers that I want to use to replace that middle term. Okay. Again, we can't use the shortcut because our leading coefficient is not a 1. So we're going to go ahead and write our leading term, which is 12x squared. We're going to put in our two new middle terms as negative 16x and 9x. And then our constant term, negative 12, and that's equal to 0. So now I can go ahead and group. So when I group, the first two have a common factor of 4x. When I take out 4x, I'll be left with 3x minus 4, right? Remember, when you take it out, you're dividing it off of both terms. 
Okay. What I can divide off of both terms in my second pairing here is a positive 3, which will leave me with 3x minus 4, which is what I wanted, right? Because I want to end up with that common factor. Um, or in other words, I want my leftovers to match. Because if those are the same, now I can factor that out as a common factor. So if I take out 3x minus 4 as a common factor, what I'm left with from the first term is 4x. What I'm left with from the second term is a positive 3. So now it's fully factored. Now I just have to set each factor equal to 0 so I can solve. Okay. So that means 3x minus 4 equals 0 or 4x plus 3 equals 0. So on the first one, I'm going to move my 4 over by adding. So 3x equals 4 and then divide off my 3, which tells me that x equals 4 thirds. Okay. On the second one, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So 4x equals negative 3 and then divide my 4 off which gives me x equals negative 3 fourths. Okay, we kind of okay with the process, maybe, maybe not too bad. All right, so on the next page, there are three for y'all to try. So go ahead and pause the video and um, give it a whirl. <laughs> See how it goes. Unpause the video when you're ready to check yourself. Okay, let's see how you did. So on number one, first thing we should look to do is take out a greatest common factor of 2x. Now make sure, even though you're dividing it off, be sure you write it out here because that's now one of our factors we have to solve. So if we take out a 2x, we should be left with x plus 21, and now it's fully factored. I can't go any further, so I just set each factor equal to zero and solve, which should give us the solutions zero and negative 21. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move on to number two. If you need more time as I'm going through these, feel free to pause the video again. Okay, number two, excuse me, number two, I first need to get it equal to zero. So I start by taking that 30 and subtracting it to the other side, which gives me x squared plus 13x minus 30 equals zero. Okay, and then I look for a greatest common factor. Don't have one. So I go straight to my chart. My sum is my middle coefficient, which is 13, and my product is my first coefficient, which is 1, times my last coefficient, which is negative 30. So 1 times negative 30 is negative 30, and then I find a pair that works. So 15 and 2 is the pair I want to use, and to get a 13, I need to use a positive 15 and a negative 2. Now, pause, pause, hold the phone, people. All right, now, because my leading coefficient is a 1, I can use the shortcut on this one. So if you happen to notice that, that the leading coefficient is a 1, once you have the numbers in your chart, you know you're going to use a positive 15 and a negative 2. You can skip and just say this is going to factor into x plus 15 times x minus 2. So you can go straight from the chart to the factored uh, quantities. Okay. If you don't remember that, that's okay. You can still take your two numbers from the chart and plug them in for the middle term and then do grouping. Okay. Either way, you're going to end up with x plus 15 times x minus 2 equals 0. And then you set each of these um, equal to 0 and solve. Okay. So your solution should be negative 15 and positive 2. All right, let's look at the last one. The last one should have been the easiest one <laughs> because it's already factored for you. So all you have to do is set each factor equal to zero and solve. Okay, when you solve the first one, you get negative three fifths. Again, leave it as a reduced fraction. Don't turn it into a decimal. And the second one, we get positive three. All right. Okay, so that is the end of J19, which is our principle of zero products. So you should now be able to complete that assignment. Please let me know if you have any issues.